Welcome to the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein, Quick Hitter Edition. We're going to New York City, and we're going to welcome home Bonanno, acting capo, Robert, little Robert Lino, uh, who was a, a rising star in the family in the 1990s, uh, copped a plea in, I believe, 2001 to participating in two mob hits, um, was the point man for the entire uh, New York LCN down in Wall Street in the late 90s with the internet stock boom. Uh, he was the the he was he was the pump and dump uh, king. He was the guy that kind of uh, blueprinted how to make money in this new tech age that was coming upon us in the late 90s. It was a consolidation of all the different five families uh, coming together to create a kind of an investment company and uh, have little Robert and uh, one of the Persicos from the Columbos uh, run point for it. And they cleared like 50 million a year or something uh, with these classic pump and dump schemes with internet uh, stock prospectuses and uh, predictions and manipulations. It's what you saw in season two of the Sopranos with Christopher Maltesante and, uh, um, the two Chippendales who end up getting killed for trying to kill Christopher Montesante. But it was basically that, that story arc in the Sopranos was based on what little Robert was uh, at the forefront of for not just the Bananos, but all five families comes from a very rich mafia lineage, uh, like something like over a half dozen of his uh, uncles and grand grandfather and dad uh, all were made guys. Different families. I believe his dad, Bobby Lino Senior, was a Bonanno. His uh, one of his uh, either cousins, I believe, maybe his uncle, but I think it's his cousin, uh, Curly Lino. Frank Curly Lino was a capo uh, for, for Joe Massino. In the Bonanos as well, uh, some of the other Linos were in the Gambinos, I believe. But uh, little Robert uh, back on the scene after 24 years. In a halfway house, what's notable about his plea that he took back in 2001 was that the judge, Nicholas Garafis, who's been in the news quite a bit, he seems to be just the, the mafia judge in the federal court system right now, uh, handling all the major cases, especially the Bonanos. Uh, he didn't want to accept the plea that, that Lino put uh, was going to, uh, that had, he had worked out with the prosecutors in 2001, which gave him 30 years. Um, Garafis kind of scoffed at it at first, thought it was too lenient because Lino was admitting to his role in two mafia hits, but had a change of heart, accepted the plea. He's done about 24 of the 28 so years um, and just last week walked into a halfway house. It remains to be seen where he slots into the Bananos right now. He's only 57, very close to Bruno and Delicato uh, and knows Mikey Mancuso pretty well. Uh, so we'll see where he lands in, in this uh, current Bonanno landscape. But I would guess that at least at first, he's um, going to lean on Bruno and uh, some other people that, that he's close with from back in the day. A lot of those people uh, were part of the Messino administration are long and gone, either dead or in witness protection. He's, you know, he stood strong uh, and, and, and stood tall and, and didn't buckle under the pressure. It should be also noted that, you know, he took part in two pretty high profile mafia murders, as I've mentioned. Uh, 1990, he killed a, a Bonanno, uh, aspiring Bonanno button man, Louis Tuzio, uh, who had botched a, a, a murder uh, and ended up shooting a Gambino guy in the middle of the murder. God, he wanted the guy's head. Uh, went from um, Salvatore Vital, I believe, to Anthony Spiro, and then the contract was given to Louis and 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 somebody else. I believe it was Dirty Danny uh, Mangeli. And then in they killed him in in Brooklyn uh, behind his. He uh, yeah, had like a Chevy sports car. They they uh, unloaded on him in in, in the uh, behind the wheel. And then in 1992, he was on the cleanup crew in the Bobby Perino murder. Bobby Perino, for people that might not remember, uh, was the uh, you know, boots on the ground for the Bonanos newspaper distribution rackets at the New York Post. Uh, he was the son-in-law of Nicky Glasses. Uh, Nicky Marangello had been the uh, underboss under uh, Carmine Galante. 
And this was a, a, a very uh, dramatic hit in the sense that uh, Perino goes to what he thinks is a mob meeting. He's shot. They believed he was was killed. I, I believe the trigger man was Baldo uh, Amato. And uh, the, the cleanup team, which... Bobby Lee, or little Robert Lino and and uh, Dirty Danny Mangelli were part of came to take the body away and dispose of it. And they realized that he was still alive. Uh, somebody, I'm not sure who, took an ice pick and finished him off. Uh, they ended up burying him in a, I think in Stanton Island in a, in a, at a construction company uh, building site. Dug him up uh, about 20 years ago. So Robert Lino, uh, back on the scene in New York City. He was the um, the guru when it came to Mafia Wall Street rackets back in the 90s. A guy that was on the fast track, and we'll see where he lands in the 2024 mob landscape in the Big Apple. For uh, OG Pod, I'm Scott Bernstein. Out. Oh.